welcome everyone uh, welcome to another lecture on uh, convolution codes uh, so far we have discussed uh, uh, what uh, what are convolution codes uh, uh, the basic structure of convolution codes uh, representation in various uh, types uh, of convolution codes and also in the last video we saw how to derive a transfer function for a given convolution encoder having studied about convolution encoding so far uh, let's try to understand uh, the various types of uh, decoding uh, such convolution codes. Uh, there exist uh, different methods for decoding convolution codes. Uh, symbol by symbol estimation uh, or uh, MAP, uh, maximum uh, posteriori probability uh, estimation, uh, is a suboptimal procedure. Uh, we have derived probability of errors for various demodulation schemes uh, based on distances in n dimensional Euclidean space for m symbols. Uh, for with all those expressions uh, we can uh, find out or we can decode uh, convolution uh, codes uh, with the maximum a posteriori probability uh, maximum likelihood sequence based estimation uh, procedure or MLSE uh, is an optimal decoding uh, uh, estimation uh, for convolution codes with high constraint lengths uh, uh, optimal decoding becomes uh, too complex uh, so suboptimal decoding algorithms are usually used in such cases uh, you have studied in the decoding of uh, block codes uh, for a memoryless channel uh, you computed the distances uh, namely Hamming distance for hard decision decoding and uh, Euclidean distance for soft decision decoding uh, between the received code words and all possible 2 power k transmitted code words so there was a kind of a lookup table that all possible transmitted code words uh, could be listed and we can find out the distances uh, between the actual received code word and all the possible uh, set of code words then uh, we can select the code word that is as close to the received code word the as closure in terms of either Hamming distance or Euclidean distance based on uh, whether we are uh, uh, the decoding principle is applied with soft decision or uh, hard decision uh, the decision rule uh, which requires the computation of uh, 2 power k uh, matrix is optimum in the sense that uh, it results in minimum probability of error uh, for uh, the binary symmetric channel with uh, uh, probability p less than half and of course a uh, additive white Gaussian noise uh, additive white Gaussian noise channel uh, however unlike block codes we have fixed length n for a convolution encoder uh, which is a basically finite state machine uh, optimum decoding of a convolution code involves uh, a search through the trellis for the most probable sequence uh, depending on whether the detector following demodulator uh, uh, performs hard or soft decisions, a corresponding metric in the trellis search uh, may be either a Hamming metric uh, or uh, a Euclidean metric respectively. And accordingly, it could be hard decision decoding or soft decision decoding respectively. Uh, the basic uh, difference between MAP estimation and MLE or MLSE estimation is that the ML detector minimizes the probability of selecting the wrong code word whereas the map decoder minimizes the decoded bit error rate both look very similar to each other but they have uh, their own uh, mathematical interpretations so I'll repeat that the maximum likelihood detector minimizes the probability of selecting the wrong code word whereas uh, the suboptimal procedure uh, decoder uh, minimizes uh, the decoded bit error rate it reduces the probability of error uh, but uh, here it reduces the probability of selecting the wrong code word okay so that's uh, basically there are two uh, major types of uh, uh, decoding of convolution codes uh, there is a uh, well known uh, algorithm for decoding of convolution codes based on maximum likelihood estimator known as Witterby algorithm uh, introduced uh, by uh, Andrew Witterby in around 1967 Andrew Witterby uh, graduated from MIT uh, in around 1950s and later uh, he started pursuing his uh, research uh, in uh, uh, University of California uh, later he obtained after uh, obtaining a, a, a PhD 
uh, he started working on to various domains uh, one of them was a Viterbi algorithm uh, later uh, Omura uh, showed that the Viterbi algorithm uh, is indeed a short path uh, finding the short finding the shortest path through the weighted graph the weighted graph we have seen in uh, in earlier case where we described transfer function so it was very equivalent to finding the shortest path uh, Forney uh, and the scientist recognized uh, this Viterbi algorithm uh, as uh, finding a fact of uh, maximum likelihood decoding algorithm itself for convolution codes uh, that is uh, the decoder output is based on largest value of the log likelihood function a maximum likelihood estimator is uh, mathematically is uh, uh, the largest value maximizing uh, the log likelihood function itself so Forney finally demonstrated or uh, proved that uh, uh, indeed winter algorithm is uh, optimal decoding uh, technique now Viterbi algorithm is wisely used in various communication systems uh, say example Ethernet receiver uh, hard disk uh, of uh, writing digital content and even our uh, Texas Instruments DSP processor that we use in our laboratory as C64XX processor uh, has a dedicated on-chip decoder uh, in fact Viterbi decoder and turbo decoder together occupy less than 8% of total chip area with just a small area uh, they perform a uh, highly computational uh, uh, algorithms in uh, decoding of convolution codes. Uh, you should also uh, uh, know that uh, Andrew Witterby is one of the co-founder of uh, Qualcomm as well. Uh, so it has uh, penetrated, his algorithm has penetrated deeper into various uh, uh, types of communication systems. All right, so let's try to understand about uh, the Witterby algorithm. The algorithm starts with initialization so uh, we'll set all the state to zero we'll begin with all zero state of the trellis in order to decode uh, the convolution codes uh, the first step is to uh, start at some random time unit j we'll usually begin with first time instant but you can begin at uh, as uh, viterbi algorithm progresses we can begin at any time unit and you should determine the metric for that path uh, that enters each state of the trellis so there will be many dots in the trellis uh, diagram as you have seen uh, each we should find out the metrics metrics in terms of uh, either path metric or uh, sometimes it is known as branch metric bm or pm are used as abbreviations uh, we should find out uh, the metric the metric being here is either it could be uh, uh, having distance or it could be euclidean distance based on um, a soft decision or hard decision uh, uh, decoder technique respectively once we have identified or once we have uh, uh, determined the metric we should identify the survivor path uh, and take out uh, the uh, the path which has got higher metric and retain the survivor path and store the metric for each one of the states we will understand this once we take specific examples uh, step 2 is the heart of this algorithm uh, where for the next time unit uh, we should determine the similar metrics for all 2 power l minus 1 paths all the combinations uh, all the paths which are entering a particular state uh, where l is a constraint length and hence uh, we should do uh, the three operations the three operations here uh, one of them is add add the metrics so we should accumulate as you progress along time scale uh, so accumulate all the metrics entering the state to that uh, to the metric uh, previous to that of the survivor at the preceding time unit j so we should keep on adding the metrics we can should keep on accumulating the metrics for the survivor paths uh, entering to that particular state once we add we should compare with the metrics for all other paths entering the state uh, once we try to compare we'll try to find out which has got least amount of the metric then select or choose the survivor with the largest metric okay. uh, or the minimum uh, distance uh, or the minimum distance or minimum having distance or minimum Euclidean distance or in other words it could be a largest metric and once you choose or select the survivor store it along with its metric so the, the particular node uh, will, will have the metric value and discard all other paths in the trellis uh, we should uh, add compare and select ACS should be the abbreviation which is the heart of Whittleby algorithm we will understand it better with a particular example 
finally as a step 3 uh, we should repeat this algorithm for all uh, time states until uh, we uh, we uh, complete with the received sequence the received sequence is uh, the length of the message original message sequence plus the length of the termination sequence where uh, n represents the original information bits n dash represent those uh, bits which are used to flush out uh, the memory of the register at the transmitter end n dash is the number of uh, uh, sequ uh, number of terminator sequences used to reset uh, the memory of the transmitter uh, uh, register uh, we should keep on repeating this algorithm until we elapse uh, all the information bits and as a final point we should terminate uh, at once we uh, reach the total amount of information bits uh, this is the basic algorithm structure with which we will be following uh, and uh, without ado we will pick up an example and try to implement the Viterbi algorithm for a given convolution uh, encoder and we will take an example with uh, received sequence and we will try to decode uh, what has been transmitted from the transmitter end. Uh, this is one of the uh, 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 convolution encoder we have been uh, using and I have just represented its uh, trellis diagram for only just to uh, just to depict all the uh, uh, combinations of transformation from one state to another uh, that can be obtained for uh, uh, for taking all the combinations irrespective of what message has been transmitted this depicts uh, all the combinations uh, which can be easily obtained uh, by uh, uh, by having uh, by tabulating state diagram and uh, drawing the trellis uh, let's assume that channel has outputted uh, received bit stream uh, I mean channel has outputted a certain bit stream uh, which is also the received bit stream uh, received at the front end of the receiver uh, this is one of the sequence I have taken as an example uh, so with this uh, channel output with this received bit stream we should be able to decode what has been transmitted uh, the first step in the algorithm is to start with all zero state I just given all the timestamp uh, so that we'll exhaust with all uh, the received bit stream till the end. So let's begin with all zero state. So there are four states here. Accordingly, there are uh, uh, four state of the encoder. Uh, this is dedicated for uh, message bit, and these two are the state of uh, uh, the memory register. And accordingly, the state of the registers being zero 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 one one zero and one one. Accordingly, I have. Uh, uh, taken uh, the nodes as representing the four different states uh, let's start developing the Viterbi algorithm uh, it starts uh, uh, drawing uh, the transition starting with the zero state so with the zero state uh, to begin with the received sequence have been split into two bits uh, group because we know that uh, is a rate half encoder so uh, we'll divide the bits into two groups uh, such that the actual uh, received bit stream would be 10, 01, 11, 01, 11 and 10. So uh, this is uh, the one which is actually uh, uh, received uh, as this example that is given. <coughs> All right. So begin with uh, the zero state. Uh, we'll have two uh, possible transitions. So with for uh, initial state, we have got this transition or this transition. The transition. Uh, from uh, state 00, 0 to itself and there is a transition from 00, 0 state to 10 state if I name this as A, B, C, D is a transition from A to A and this is a transition from A to C and there are two combinations uh, we don't know which to choose how to progress uh, as Viterbi algorithm says that we should find out or we should add with metric for each path so metric could be path metric or branch metric uh, sometimes it is called as the metric depends on whether we are uh, applying soft decision or hard decision we will take this example with hard decision where we have to find out the metric by uh, finding out Hamming distance uh, as you know uh, the output for this path the output for with this path is 0 0 for uh, as you know that uh, darker line indicates for input uh, 0 and the uh, dotted or dashed line indicates the uh, output for input bit 1 uh, for this path the output is 0 0 for this path the output is 1 1 uh, for this path output is 0 0 
but the actual received sequence is 1 0 the Hamming distance or uh, in what numbers these two uh, words are different uh, the code words are different these two are different in only one bit and hence the Hamming distance between them uh, is 1 and accordingly uh, this has output of 1 1 comparing with 1 0 this also has a Hamming distance of 1 so these are these two are the branch metric uh, for uh, these two these two uh, uh, paths the next part of the algorithm is to update the path metric at the nodes uh, since we have begun with uh, uh, zero state uh, the currently we have got one and one as it is but these two nodes are untouched because we have begun with zero state now we are at the next timestamp j plus one we have got two nodes to start with uh, now we have got multiple paths to to move from uh, this state to this state or uh, to move from this timestamp to next timestamp from this node again we will have two more branches so we will have two more branches uh, which will uh, very similar to the previous one but uh, we should add with branch matrix finding by finding out the Hamming distance between the respective outputs and the actual uh, bit that is received this is 0 1 and this output is 0 0 again the difference of Hamming distance between them is 1 and for here it's 1 1 and 1 1 and the difference is uh, uh, you know, 1 again so with that uh, uh, metric now we know that we, uh, the actual uh, updation about the uh, path metric at the nodes is accumulation or the, uh, the accumulation of the uh, metric obtained at the previous timestamp uh, this would be 1 plus 1 and hence this will be 2 and similarly this is 1 and this is 1 so the addition of that will give you 2 and 2 as updation of uh, uh, the path metric at uh, at uh, t2 timestamp uh, this is not all uh, since we have another uh, node here which has been transition it can we can take you know two more paths from this so from uh, 0 1 0 state it can go up here or it can come down here accordingly we will have uh, two optional of uh, uh, branches two options of branches one is coming here another is going here uh, so what would be the Hamming distance for this uh, Hamming distance uh, I mean the output for that path is 0 1 uh, when we compare with actual uh, received sequence is also 0 1 the, the path uh, metric would be simply 0 because there is no difference however for this this output as it is mentioned here it is 1 0 when you compare with the actual received sequence uh, it is completely flipped and hence the uh, Hamming distance between these two would be 2 uh, so 0 and 2 would be the path metric and uh, we should update the path metric at the nodes as well at this node uh, 0 plus 1 uh, 1 would be the path metric uh, 2 plus 1 uh, 3 would be the path metric for this node so for t2 uh, uh, timestamp uh, these are the status of the path uh, metrics at uh, all the states uh, from here we can again branch out from all uh, the uh, nodes here or the, all the states here instead uh, we can also do alternatively in other case where we will try to take in uh, the combinations from all other nodes at a particular node so for if I take the first node here uh, this has got input from uh, the first uh, state and the second state or a state and b state so uh, state a has got input from its own state and uh, another state uh, 0 1 uh, what would be the path matrix for that path matrix for that would be for 0 0 uh, and 1 1 if you compare the path matrix would be 2 because though both are different uh, in their bits uh, however for this uh, the output is 1 1 this is also 1 1 and hence the difference of Hamming distance is 0 uh, also we should uh, see that uh, we update the path metric at this particular node now you can see that 2 plus 2 is 4 and 0 plus 1 is 1 we should uh, see that heart of uh, the Viterbi algorithm is that we should add compare and select so if you try to compare these two uh, this being uh, the highest having distance uh, uh, or highest path metric we'll try to ignore we'll try to find out which is as close to the received bit sequence and hence uh, the Hamming distance should be uh, very close to each other and hence we'll try to eliminate we cut out the the path which has got a uh, high uh, path metric uh, the accumulation of 1 plus 0 and 1 would be the actual the path metric at uh, the timestamp t3
okay similarly for this uh, state uh, there are two incoming uh, branches here so for this uh, uh, state there are two incoming uh, branches from uh, uh, state c and state d uh, the output for each of them would be 0 1 and 1 0 accordingly you can uh, compare with 1 1 and find out the path metric the path metric is uh, being 1 and 1 for 0 1 when you compare with 1 1 the uh, Hamming distance is 1 uh, the output of this uh, particular path is 1 0 comparing with 1 1 you will have Hamming distance of 1 now if you try to find out what is the updation of a path metric this is 2 plus 1 3 this is 3 plus 1 4 and obviously we should eliminate uh, the higher uh, 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 branch metric or uh, path metric uh, with which we will eliminate this path and we will uh, select or choose this particular path and hence the updation of uh, path metric at this node would be simply 2 plus 1 which will be 3 uh, for this node having eliminated this one you accordingly you can keep on uh, growing this uh, for this node uh, the inputs are from uh, state A and state B there are two inputs for this node uh, output for those two is respectively 1 1 and 0 0 uh, comparing with 1 1 uh, actual which is received uh, this will have zero uh, uh, path metric this will have uh, uh, this will have uh, uh, how much uh, this will have two uh, path metric because uh, the output is zero zero uh, compared with one one will give you two uh, accumulation of again the path matrix two plus zero is uh, two uh, two plus one is three and hence we'll have to cut out uh, or eliminate this particular path and uh, retain uh, the path which has got uh, lesser uh, amount of uh, uh, a path metric so cutting that to uh, the, the cutting out this particular path will have uh, updation of path metric at this node as 2 plus 0 as 2 and finally for the last node the uh, last node has input from uh, state C and state D uh, with outputs 1 0 and 0 1 uh, respectively for 1 0 output the Hamming distance is 1 for 0 1 uh, output the Hamming distance is also 1 so we will have 1 and 1 for uh, path metric for each of those branches accumulation of uh, uh, adding of uh, uh, path matrix it will be 2 plus 1 3 and 3 plus 1 4 and obviously we can uh, similar to the previous process we can eliminate the bottom one the uh, top one will remain uh, with the actual updation of uh, path metric for this node uh, being 3 and we can keep on uh, doing this uh, the same procedure like we did for the previous one and finding out the Hamming distance the Hamming distance for these two branches now would be 1 and 1 because the actual received uh, sequence uh, at this timestamp is 0 1 uh, now if you compare or add uh, first add and compare adding these two would be 2 this would be 3 plus 1 4 so we will have to eliminate the bottom one so eliminating that bottom one and updating the path metric for that state would be 2 similarly for the next node uh, 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 these two are the two branches which are incoming to this particular node with the respective path matrix as 0 and 2 obviously this has got higher amount of path uh, matrix uh, 3 plus 2 would be 5 so we will try to eliminate that and update the path matrix for this as 2 plus 0 as 2 would be the new path matrix for this node and continuing similarly you will have 1 and 1 for these two branches as path matrix uh, accumulation of that 1 plus 1 is 2 and 3 plus 1 is 4 so we will have to eliminate the bottom one here and updating the path metric at uh, state C would be 2 at this timestamp and finally for the bottom one uh, you will if you try to compare with actual outputs uh, with the state uh, transition outputs you will have Hamming distances of 2 and 0 accumulation of this is 4 and this is 3 and obviously this upper path is eliminated and uh, the state uh, is updated with its path metric uh, finally we have got only two timestamps which are left with uh, now we need not do the same process at this timestamp as we should begin with state 0 and end with state 0 that's been our procedure so far uh, so if we try to be in this position as you can see from this state uh, it's very difficult to come back to the original state in the sense it's there is no branch which is directly coming from this state to the zero state uh, we should not we need not look up to uh, these two nodes at all as we have to reach uh, the zero state as quickly as possible 
so looking at only these two nodes <coughs> we can uh, find out uh, and update branch metrics for uh, respective branches uh, for the up node the uh, a node uh, or the a state we will have uh, two incoming branches like this again comparing with actual outputs uh, comparing with 00, zero and 11 one, one, uh, this will have two uh, as its uh, path metric and this will have zero as its path metric and accumulation of uh, uh, the uh, or uh, adding with the previous path metric this will be four and this will be two and hence the up top uh, branch can be eliminated and we should update the path metric for the state a node which is two two plus zero being two and if you consider the second node uh, this has got input from these two the second node has got input from these two with output as uh, 0 1 and 1 0 comparing with actual uh, received sequence you will have uh, path metrics as having distances as uh, 1 1 and as you know that uh, 3 plus 1 4 is a higher uh, path weight uh, we should eliminate that and retain uh, 2 plus 1 3 as the updated uh, path metric for the state B node uh, as you can see as I have told uh, I, we need not uh, find out path weights for these two nodes because we will not reach back uh, to our zero state uh, from these two nodes we can easily get back to our zero state uh, uh, the, the zero state can be achieved from uh, this path or this path only these two paths are enough uh, to find out path matrix and update our uh, uh, the path matrix at the node as well and for the last timestamp uh, the path metric uh, would be 1 and 1 comparing with 1 0 uh, with 0 0 and 1 1 accordingly we will have 1 and 1 as Hamming distances uh, respectively uh, with that uh, uh, we can update finally the path metric for this particular branch uh, so this uh, accumulates to 3 plus 1 as, as 4 and 2 plus 1 as 3 so we will obviously we'll eliminate the bottom one and update the final uh, path metric of the uh, state now uh, for every node uh, uh, as you, if you can see there is only one branch that acts as a survivor uh, only one path survives other gets eliminated and that uh, uh, elimination is based on the path uh, uh, metric or branch metric uh, now we can trace back uh, from uh, the end zero state to uh, the begin zero state and there will be only one path that will exist in our case <coughs> i'm sorry uh, so that path would be uh, starting from uh, the end zero state and tracing back uh, this is the first uh, branch that is a survivor uh, from here as you can see this is eliminated uh, this is a survivor path uh, that's a survivor path and from this node as you can see this branch is eliminated and there's only one path that gets survived here and this is another path which gets survived and from this node uh, this would be the survivor path uh, which goes back uh, to zero state and from here there are only two branches which are incoming that we have considered and this should be the tracing back from uh, end zero state to start zero state and now now we can find out what is a decoded sequence since we know uh, what is the output for each of these transitions uh, that we can list out list down and uh, <coughs> and write it down as the decoded sequence uh, so start with uh, zero state here uh, the output for this particular branch is actual output is zero zero uh, the output for this uh, branch is also zero zero output for this branch so output for this branch is in fact uh, uh, one one uh, then output for this branch uh, is actually zero one output for this branch is one one and again output for this branch would be zero zero <coughs> accordingly the decoded output sequence is 0 0 0 0 uh, 1 1 uh, 0 1 uh, 1 1 and finally 0 0 that would be our decoded output <coughs> sometimes you may be asked to <coughs> sorry uh, sometimes you may be asked to uh, find out uh, the original information uh, bit sequence which is transmitted although this is our decoded output uh, we should be able to uh, find out the original information bit sequence which is very easy to find out <coughs> where we know that uh, what is the input bit to generate uh, these outputs uh, input bit for this output is uh, 1 
uh, if I start from uh, the uh, the uh, begin zero state or start zero state, output for this I mean input bit for this is zero, input bit for this is zero because these darker lights indicate input bit zero, uh, input bit for this is one because it's a dashed line. Uh, input bit for this is 0 and this is 0 and this is also 0. So, the actual or original information bit that we have estimated by using the Viterbi algorithm by tracing the paths by uh, 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 add, compare and select rule uh, is 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So, this is the estimated information bit sequence. Uh, we don't know whether this is correct or not because we don't have any information about uh, the transmitted uh, message uh, sequence uh, and hence this may be correct or may not be this will have its own error probability of error but we know that uh, that uh, a bit error rate uh, is very very uh, less even though we have uh, uh, we don't have any information about uh, the original uh, information that has been transmitted from the transmitter and uh, this example uh, this video uh, which I can summarize as uh, introduced with uh, uh, two types of uh, uh, decoding of convolution codes. Uh, the Viterbi algorithm is uh, uh, the optimum algorithm which uses maximum likelihood estimator by comparing uh, the branch matrix uh, either uh, using Hamming distance or Euclidean distance depends on uh, hard decision or soft decision decoding technique and uh, by eliminating the higher uh, paths will there be only one survivor path for each node and tracing back from the end zero state to the start zero state will get the decoded output and hence an estimation of the information bit sequence uh, in the next video we'll pick up uh, probably another example uh, which will uh, which will also uh, has got the decoding algorithm but uh, uh, we'll take an example of both transmitter and receiver and will try to incur an error in the transmission and find out what could be the efficiency of the Viterbi algorithm uh, which uh, which eliminates the error in the transmission thank you